Yes, may thanks, Sayyid Jalal, for that beautiful rendition um, of Surah Al-Fajr, verses 15 to 30 in the Holy Qur'an. Many thanks for your time. Um, to, which brings us nicely uh, onto the, um, this segment of, of the show where we are really taking a deep dive into the supplications, the du'as, um, the ziyaras associated with the Ahlul Bayt Ali Salam and trying to shed light um, on some of the key benefits of these ziyaras and, and supplications and du'as uh, as well as maybe some facts that you didn't know about that could be a benefit to you. Um, myself and Zara, welcome as always um, Ibrahim and Ansari um, to the show. Uh, Ibrahim, Salam alaikum. Alaikum as wa rahmatullah. Um, it's always a pleasure um, yeah. to have you It's my pleasure to be here. A lot of interesting conversations and today inshallah we'll, 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 we'll have another uh, interesting uh, conversation. But before inshallah. we do start, and I'm sure that we all know, um, it is the martyrdom of Imam al kazim alayhi salam. Um, so we send our condolences to the Muslim world um, on this tragic event. We will delve into a lot more about this um, this event and this tragedy during the show. So, yeah. um, Sarah, Ibrahim, sorry. To be honest, <laughs> can I ask a question? Yes. Mm. Um, I think when we talked about the martyrdom of Imam al kazim and we said that um, we're going to be speaking about Imam al kazim today, mm. Zahra's facial expressions changed. Um, it seemed as if she had a direct connection with the Imam. Mm. Um, she remembered the Imam and I feel as if her eyes got a bit teary. Mm. So my question to you is, what happened there? Um, I think his story is painstaking and painful. It's yeah. just... You look at, recall how he was, although it's beautiful in some ways, when he said, you know, he talks about his time in the prison, that I, like, I got this opportunity to pray to you yeah. and serve you, in, in, in what most of us would feel, you know, it's hell being in a prison. Mm. But then his end, where he says to his followers, um, tell my Shia that they will see me on Wednesday. Yeah. And I think, to, he obviously didn't explain how they would see him, but to imagine that he's on the bridge where they couldn't even tell there was a body. And mm, you think, yeah. what did he go through? Yeah. Um, but an embodiment of patience. And again, Ahl Bayt have so many lessons to teach us. And, and really in the short life, it doesn't matter how many times we go over and over because we are still growing um, to reach that level of any perfection, in, you know, a minute percentage of it, but they were perfect. And what beautiful examples God has given us. So it was just that thought that, you know, there's a lot of stories that we hear about Imam al Kadhim as well yeah. throughout, I mean, during his time when he was taken from prison to prison and each prison got, you know, worse and worse. worse. The situation was worse and worse. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely... Yeah. And, and I was just, as you were talking, I was just thinking these, these Imams, um, on a general sense, mm -hmm. we, although we haven't met them, but we just want so much care um, and we just want them to be to be safe and we yeah. just want them to be um, you know we we want to look after them we want to make sure that they're they're they're, they're safe and they're and they're peaceful um, but the stories that we hear for example Imam Hussain and the rest of the Imams and especially when it comes to Imam al the thought of him going through pain it's for example if if with your father or mother or even grandfather or even to a certain extent some of the marajah some of the scholars yeah. we have so much love and devotion towards them the thought of them going through a painful experience pains us yeah. so imagine what it's like for 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 an imam uh, oh, definitely we take quite the daily. imam imam al kavum um a lot of people focus on the end of his life yeah. and a lot of people focus on him from uh, after he goes into prisons mm. okay. but he has such a great status and even by the death of his father he actually went through some kind of oppression the oppression he went through was that his older brother mm -hmm. tried to take Imama. Mm -hmm. And the Khalifa of the time, may Allah withdraw his mercy from him, he, he said, he tried to bring in the Ismaili sect, who's also his brother. Although Ismail had died about 20 years before that, mm -hmm. maybe a bit less, and they tried to renew it, to make sure that he doesn't get the Imam. Whereas Imam al-Sadiq, he was very smart in, 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 in how, in how mm. he approached the situation mm. during his lifetime. Where when the Imam was five years of age, Which Imam? Imam al kazim okay. When he was five years of age, his father Imam al-Sadiq, some of the questions he was asked, he would refer yeah. them back to Imam mm. al kazim at five years of age. Mm. For example, for example, mm. the biggest question or one of the biggest questions he was asked at the age of five was by Abu Hanifa, mm. Abu Hanifa mm. al-Nu'man. He comes to him and he says, what do you say? Does a man have free will or not? Yeah. 
at the age of five. He replies by saying this splits into three categories. Either God is making man do it. Two, both God and man are doing it together. Or three, no, man has free will and God has no hand in it. He says, if we take the first, then God cannot punish his servant for something he forced him to do. Mm. If we take the second, then God cannot punish his servant for something he was a partner in. Mm. So therefore it leaves us with the third, which means that man has to have free will. And another state where you realize the taqwa of Imam al kadhim is when he stands praying in front of an open door. Again, Abu Hanifa comes. Abu Hanifa goes to Imam al-Sadiq and he says to him, do you not tell us to not pray in front of open doors? Mm. Why is your son doing it? Mm. Imam al-Sadiq looked at him. He said, am I praying in front of the open door or is my son praying in front of the open door? He said, no, your son, but you told us not to do it. Why don't you tell your son? He said to him, if it is my son doing it, then go to my son and ask him why. Yeah. He went to Imam al kadhim and he said, because God is closer to me than that door. This is the taqwa of Imam al kadhim This is Imam al kadhim from a young age. Imam al-Sadiq showed that he was ready yeah. for such, such a status of Imam. Of course, the caliphs didn't like it. Yeah. They didn't like it at all. And they, they, they for example, at, after the istishhad of Imam al-Sadiq, by the hand of the caliph of the time, he sends a letter to Wali al-Madina. And he says to him, uh, kill all of those who, who Sadiq has put in his wasiyya to be after him. Imam Sadiq had, had written that the first is the Khalifa. Mm. The second is Wali al-Madina. The third is Abdullah. The fourth is uh, a lady. Uh, I forgot her name. And the fifth is Imam al kadhim now he can't leave the first four and go to Imam al kadhim straight away. Yeah. So he said, no, then leave it. Yeah. Yeah, that's they tried it from, from as soon as Imam al-Sadiq passed, passed away, they tried to, to, to kill the Imam. Mm. They, they weren't able to. Then that is when after, after time they took him, uh, when Harun al-Rashid came, may Allah withdraw his mercy from him. The reason he took him was this. When he heard of the great status of Imam al kadhim he goes to the grave of Rasulullah and he goes to the grave and he says to him Assalamu alayka ya am Peace be upon you O uncle to show that he has direct relation to Rasulullah Why? To try to minimize the status of Imam al-Kadhim when, when he did that Imam al-Kadhim was at the grave of Rasulullah He said Assalamu alayka ya jad Peace be upon you, O grandfather. Then Imam al kadhim turns around to Harun al-Rashid and he says to him, if Rasulullah was to come right now and ask for your daughter's hand in marriage, would you give her to Rasulullah? Mm -hmm. He said, yes. He said, you see, that's the difference. Yeah. Because for me, I cannot give her as it's mahram. Yeah. yeah. He was taken Wisdom. to prison. Wisdom. Just that, you know, you look at their ages and when you talk about, you know, the five-year-olds, you think, subhanAllah, even the children in Karbala, they weren't, you know, like the children that we have today, five years old. It was mm. such, you know, pearls of wisdom. It's amazing. But yeah. I'm just conscious that the ziyara yeah. you need to recite. So <coughs> would yeah. you like to... So the ziyara of Imam al-Kadhim, alayhi salam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Assalamu alayka ya ibn Rasulillah. وابن وصيه السلام عليك يا مولاي يا موسى بن جعفر ورحمة الله وبركاته أشهد, أن أشهد أنك قد بلغت عن الله ما حملك وحفظت ما استودعك وحللت حلاء آل الله وحرمت حرام الله وأقمت أحكام الله وتلوت كتاب الله وصبرت على الأذى في جنب الله وجاهدت في الله حق جهاده 
حتى أتاك اليقين وأشهد أنك مضيت على ما مضى عليه آباؤك الطاهرون وأجدادك الطيبون الأوصياء الهادون الأئمة المهديون لم تؤثر عمن على هدى ولم تمل من حق إلى باطل وأشهد أنك نصحت لله ولرسوله ولأمير المؤمنين وأنك أديت الأمانة واجتنبت الخيانة وأقمت الصلاة وآتيت الزكاة وأمرت بالمعروف ونهيت عن المنكر وعبدت الله مخلصا مجتهدا محتسبا حتى أتاك اليقين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد It's very interesting because when you visit um, the, the, the shrines of Imam Al-Kadhim and Imam Al-Jawad who are very right next to each other yeah. um, sometimes you find in one corner there could be a, a joint ziyara yeah. so it's speaking to both Imams at the same time and I think sometimes you find another door which um, is a ziyara specifically for Imam Al-Kadhim yeah. and another door specifically for Imam So this one is speaking specifically about? This is specifically to Imam Al-Kadhim alayhi mm -hmm. al So they do have, they both have specific ziyaras yes. and they have a joint ziyara yeah, as do, well yeah. Yeah. So this one is directly to Imam Al-Kadhim mm -hmm. alayhi salatu wasalam And in terms of the, the, the language as well, we, 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 talk, we talk a lot during, during yeah. these segments about mm. the language that's used um, in the previous uh, uh, couple of sessions uh, for the martyrdom, Imam of, the martyrdom of um, Sayyidah Zainab alayhi um, salam. The words and the language used was very descriptive, very yeah. um, out of the norm when it comes to usual ziyaras. Yeah. Obviously, because it reflects her, her story, mm. her tragedy. Yeah. When it comes to this specific ziyara, it's a bit more Generic, oh, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit more generic, a bit more of a normal, mm. as this, we could say, ziyara, right? Yeah, this is more of the, let's call it the traditional yeah. the way of ziyara. Yeah. So you, when you do ziyara of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, it's very similar. Mm -hmm. The ziyara of Abu Al Fadl al Abbas, yeah. mm -hmm. very similar. It's, it, it follows yeah. that that sort of um, way. However, we must not undermine this no. way, because first of all, um, you are sending your salams to people who are definitely ahya. And the Rabbihim Yurzaqun, just like the Quran said, that, that do not count those who have died in the way of Allah to be dead. Yeah. Instead, they are alive yeah. by their Lord, receiving great bounties. Yeah. And also, because these ziyaras, they show the statuses of the Imams. So, for example, in one part, he says, Nasahta lillahi wali rasulihi wali amir al mu'minin. It means that throughout his life, the only way he was going in, the only way he was advising in, was advising towards the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which he sent through Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of course, it also gives mention to Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, because he is the one who allowed this message to carry on as well. So that is very important to understand how he lived his life. Yeah. That even in, in prison, because we know, and for example, in Basra, mm. the, the person who was in charge of, of the prison, he said, I cannot keep him anymore mm. because I can see mm. nothing but piety from him. Yeah. Then they moved him to another prison in Baghdad. And that prison in Baghdad, the person who was in charge of it, he actually became a Shia of Imam al mm. And in the worst prison that he was sent, which was guarded by a Sindhi, yes. even then, one of the guards was actually a Shia of Imam. And to prove it, the guard actually comes. Imam al kadhim by the way, played a great role in teaching us taqiyah. Mm. He played one of the biggest roles of the Imams of teaching us how to perform taqiyah. Mm. He, one of the guards comes to the Imam and he says to him, Oh Imam, I have... Uh, sorry, the Imam comes to him. He says to him, come. He says, I think Harun al-Rashid is looking to behead you and is looking for an excuse. If you are Shia, you're going to be beheaded. Therefore, when you go, do your wudu. When you go, do your wudu. Mm. By the way, this explanation at the start is from me. Mm. He says to the, uh, to the God, he says, when you do your wudu, wash your feet and do not wipe them the way that they do. Okay. Yeah. Wash your feet and do not wipe them. So that day, Harun al-Rashid has had gods to overlook this God for when he performs his wudu. SubhanAllah. 
He went and they saw that he washed his feet instead yeah. of wiping them. They said, no, he's from our people. Yeah. Mm. So they left him alone. Then he came back and he said, next time when you do your wudu, start wiping again. Mm. Subhanallah. Such imams of mercy, really. Yeah. I think uh, we're towards the end of the time now. Yes. Sorry. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add before That's all, Ali you? Just no. lastly, yeah. from, from his name, Kazim al Ghayd, we must take that as a lesson. Just yes. his name in itself is a lesson. Kazim al Ghayd is a person who keeps an anger from great tragedies that befall upon them. So if he was able to do so, we must take him in lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana and likewise in his household. So inshallah, we can all remain patient and follow the first steps of the imam. Inshallah. inshallah. And that's easier an, said than done. But yeah. It's definitely. Mm, and that's massive an, life lessons and yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely things to take forward. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I personally learned so much. It's just so beautiful to have the conversations about Ahl Bayd and I hope the viewers enjoy um, these um, discussions as much as... I do, and I hope, you know, inshallah, I'm Ali very does much as well. So. Yeah, exactly. yeah, very much so. Um, have a blessed I still day. have, by the way, uh, like three or four more questions, but it's just a time oh, that doesn't yeah. permit exactly. us. But inshallah, we'll, we'll carry on. Inshallah. 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 Yeah. inshallah, inshallah, definitely. So next uh, yeah, on that note, um, um, we will be joined by Barack Hussein as well as Zara, uh, who will be focusing on the specialist segment. Um, so please join us after the break.